doesn't come from what you have heard, it's what you are presently hearing. The enemy was behind him. The Red Sea was before him. God told Moses, stretch your hand over the Red Sea. And he did. And the Bible says, it's open. God is a God of love. And God is a God of dreams. God is a God of purpose. I tell young people, I was invited to a church, I think in Germany, years ago. And the pastors invited me to teach in purpose. And I learned something. And what I was, what I was teaching, there was a, 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 law, a doctor in the service. He was just crying. Because I was, I was telling him he was a doctor and he was a pastor. And he was confused. His confusion was, how can I be a doctor and a pastor at the same time? And he, and he was exposed to some, some, some religion. Religion is toxic. I don't like religion. Whether it's Islam, um, Judaism, all ism is bad news. I don't do religion. And there's a aspect of Christianity is really bad too. But we do life in Christ. I hear me here. We, we do life in Christ. I live in faith. We do life in Christ. If you are still into religion, that might be um, the, the sign of bad news. But if you're into life, happy are you. If you're into Jesus, happy. Happiness would ooze out of you. If you're in religion, that's a complete different thing. The religion has caused more pain than anything else. So, Jesus, when he came to the earth, he didn't come to start a religion. He came to bring life. He came for two purposes. He came to die for mankind. Because someone needs to die. Because we have, we have sinned and break the laws of God. And God says that the soul that sinned shall die. So every human being has broken the laws of God. And because we have broken the laws of God, a judgment was released on us. And we were in bondage. We couldn't get out of it. But then Jesus came. And paid the ultimate price. By dying for your sins. Not just your past sins. But your future sins. He paid the price for it. And liberate your spirit. From guilt and shame. Liberate the, the grip that was on your mind. That's the first reason he came. The second reason he came was to show you you in your finest potential. To show you, you. When you see Jesus, it's a picture of you in your finest potential. When you see Jesus, you don't see a religious fellow. You see a man of compassion. You see a man of purpose. A man on target. And it's a picture of you. Of what you can be. It's a calling. To you. It's telling you. Don't try to improve yourself. Look at me and you'll be fine. Come on. Because human beings are always looking for fig leaves. To cover up their mistake. To cover up their issue. But when you look at Jesus. You become him. There's a force. That comes from Jesus. I'm speaking from experience. Remember when I was going to get saved. I had all kinds of issues I was struggling with. 
even though I was born again. But the more I look at Jesus, the more I'm changed. Can whatever you look at start to influence you? Whatever you, you focus on start to influence you. That's why we keep looking on Jesus. There's a wonderful story in the Bible that um, the children of Israel while they're in the wilderness they've been disobedient to God and serpent came and, and bite them and many of them died and Moses built um, a serpent an image of a serpent. He said all of you who are sick look at the serpent. Look at it. It looked foolish. But when you look at the solution, you'll have the answer. If you look at the problem, it amplifies. You know, in your, in your own marriage, in your own life. You keep looking at the problem, it gets bigger. But you look at the solution. Christ is the solution. Jesus is the solution. Even if you don't know what to do. He would will, he will give you answers. He will bring ideas to your mind. He will bring solutions to your mind. As you look at him. The Bible said the children of Israel look at the serpent. And as many as look at the serpent they were healed. We look at Jesus. Hallelujah. Jesus is your breakthrough. He is your jubilee. He is your solution. He is your way out of your predicament. Jesus. Say Jesus. And he told us that this year is our year of divine alignment. And much favor. Say much favor. Say much favor. And I told you that. It is impossible for you to fulfill your destiny without favor. You will not fulfill your destiny if you don't have favor. We see greater men than you and I depend on the favor of God to fulfill the destiny. Jesus, even though he was perfect, he relied on God's favor to help him fulfill his destiny. Oh, are you in this place? Now, look at Psalms. Let me get my notes here. Psalms 102, verse 13. I have something to share with you today. Are you come hungry? Are you hungry? You come hungry, God's going to feed you. Not with candies, but with, with good substance. Can they give you rotten teeth and other issues? But you need, you need food for the journey. Meat for the journey. Meat for your soul. Meat so you can overcome the problem that you're facing. Amen. He said, thou shall arise. Read it for me. One, two, three, go. Read it for me. One, two, three, go. Woo. Come on. Can you read it like you believe it? Please, one, two, three, go. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yea, the set time is come. The set time is come. Oh, the set time is come. Say, all things are possible. Say, all things are possible. In my business. All things are possible. In my career, all things are possible. In my body, all things are possible. With my children, all things are possible. With my finances, all things are possible. In my family, all things are possible. All things are possible with me in the name of Jesus. Every time you speak words over your life, you reinforce the blessing or you reinforce the curse. 
Are you following me here? I was saying that when, when Abraham made a covenant with God, we discover some amazing qualities. Start to follow Abraham. One of the qualities that I discovered in the Bible was favor. Favor. So what is favor? I, I give different thoughts to you because it's sort of a vast subject. And I have some more to give to you again. What is favor? Favor is a divine quality that God release on your life. That make your life tasteful and beautiful. It's a quality, a divine quality that God release on your life that, that make your life tasteful. Say tasteful and beautiful. It's a quality that God himself release on your life. I remember, I, I'm holding a thought for a second and come up to that. Favor is an invisible substance that God placed on you through the spoken word. It's an invisible substance that God placed on you through the spoken word. Every time God speaks over you, he released favor. He released that substance. That tangible substance. And that substance follow you. Wherever you go, it follows you. Oh, that's, that's, that's a blessing. With the substance of favor, you will influence the natural. With the substance, are you with me here? With the substance of favor, you will influence the natural. It's a substance. It's a tangible substance. With the substance of favor, you will influence the natural and cause goodwill to follow you. With the, when God speaks over you, as a man of God, I speak over you. It reinforces the substance of favor that God placed on you. Oh, hallelujah. Favor calls hostile environment to become beautiful. It calls hostile environment. It's a hostile environment. It's an, it's an atmosphere where things not going good. It's hostile. It's against you. But when you show up, we're in favor, it changes. God. When you show up, we're in the blanket of favor. It has no choice but to change. Can you shout favor is all over me? Come on, talk to me. Say, favor is all over me. Favor is in my home. Favor is on my family. Favor is attached to my name. It's a substance that causes hostile environment to become beautiful and harsh desert life to become the Garden of Eden. Favor will cause heaven to follow you. It will cause heaven to follow you. It's something that come over you. You know, for example, one of the best examples of this, of this favor I'm talking about, is a young man called Joseph. Genesis 37. He came to Egypt as, as a slave. A slave. We have seen pictures of slaves that come with chains, that come with shackles. 
But when Mr. Potiphar saw Joseph, he saw favor. Ha! Ah. God opened his eyes to see favor. And when men see God's favor on you, men will favor you. And if you believe, you have to receive this by faith. Therefore, it will affect your speech. It will affect your thinking. You know, there, there's a mindset. I, I see around Christians. I, I don't understand it. I, I, try, I, I feel sorry for Christians who, who talk this way. And I see sometimes around people. And it breaks my heart. Because I, I know that God's favor is on his children. There's some people who say, I can't do, I can't, I cannot do A because I don't have B. And I can't do B because I can't do C. And I cannot, I definitely can't do C because I don't have D. And it's a circle. I can't move forward. I want to apply for the job, but I can't. Why? I don't have a resume. So then make one. I cannot make one. Why? I can't type. Ah! I've seen that craziness. But when you understand that favor is on you, you tell the circumstances. I am a child of possibility. My case is different. My story is different. Maybe I was born on the wrong side of the track. But things have changed because I came to Christ. It must be in my speech. It must be in your thoughts. Years ago, years ago, years ago, I was in Vernon. I was in Vernon. And I met this, 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 this fellow who, he looked like me. He's a black person. He looked like me. So he's asked me a question. He said to me, things must be rough for you in Vernon. I said, rough for me in Vernon? He said, brother, come on. It must be rough. I mean, everyone around here is white. It must be rough for you. I said, no. Because there's something on me that no one can resist. It's called favor. I have to believe that. He said, if you decide to be a victim, you activate the curse on your life. And another thing is that women, I can't go into ministry. Why? I'm a woman. The woman. Oh. He said, no limits. So I break every limitation from my life. I'm a child of destiny. I am a child of destiny. There is no limitation with me or on me. There's a, there's a man I'm trying to bring to this church here. I'm working in it. He's from Australia. He born without limbs. He born without limbs. And when he speaks, you cry. Can you say if he can overcome that mental challenges, there's something wrong with me who have hands and feet. I'm bringing me one these days. He was an Oprah. He was jumping up, up the steps and everybody was nervous. He would fall. He said, what if I fall? I get up again. <laughs> Said there is no handicap with me. Said there is no handicap with me. I'm a child of destiny. Favor is in my name. Favor is on my name. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let no one limit you. And that's why you have to find the, the right group of people to be around. I remember as a, as a young kid growing up, I was about nine years old. And, you know, you know I was born in, in, in poverty. And I discover one of my neighbor, 
he had a television. And the first, that's back then, there were no cables. And electric, he had a generator that produced electricity. Um, I thought electricity was from God. It was so beautiful to see lights. Can we use lantern, you know? The electricity. So he, he had this generator and he put electricity. And he had, he had his television. It was a black and white television. He had those rabbit ears. You know what I'm talking about, right? Are you here in this place? These young folks are like, what? What, what, what pastor's talking about? Like, what? Rabbit ears? I thought there was some iPhones and iPad back then. No, 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 no. And it, so my friend had an idea. He said, how come the television is black and white? He decided to put color paper, plastic paper on the television. He was very creative. But I remember there's a, a television show. He used to come on named Perry Mason. He was a lawyer. And I love Perry Mason. I just had this idea. I, I used to start out really bad. I said, I, I, I would be, be, be Perry Mason. They said, hey, you. You going to be Perry Mason. All I was trying to find somebody to just come into agreement with a little dream I had to be Perry Mason. I like how we solve problems. They said to, one guy said, you, you, you can't even talk. How can you be Perry Mason? I said, I, I, I don't know, but I, I, I want to be Perry, Perry, Perry Mason. Sometimes it's very difficult to find people who can even give you some support to your dreams. Because they filter your dreams to their, in their, to their own limitation. They, they filter your, they, 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 they put curses on you with words and, and say, you can't do that. Now, maybe it wasn't God's will for me to be Perry Mason. But at least just say, yeah brother. You can be Perry Mason. Why no? Why, why is it possible? Today, I'm better than Perry Mason. Glory be to God. I solve spiritual cases. Cast out devils. Amen. You got to find people. That two. That three. That person. That can support your dreams. Be careful. Be careful who you share your dreams with. Because they are dream. They are dream. Dream killers. They will try to tell you you can't do certain things. Because in their mind, it's impossible for them. But I tell you, all things are possible with you. Say, all things are possible with me. Come on, say, all things are possible. You see, when you speak like this, you release favor on your life. Now, let's, let's, let's continue here. Let's continue here. You're getting something, right? Am I just talking? You're getting something here. Because, because I'm, I'm believing for awesome things for your life. Favor. When God placed his favor on you, natural men have no choice but to respond to you. When God places favor in you. And he does it through the spoken word. He, he speak words over your life. And establish you. One of the. Sometimes you need to use something negative. To explain something positive. One of the best way. The last show me to explain. The tangible substance of favor is the tangible substance of a curse. Of what? A curse. I, I, I wish I had a, the, my background here to show you something. We're in Nation Zimbabwe, my wife and Meyer and Sean, and one, one morning I was preaching, and 
there was a man, his name was Honest. There was a curse on his family. When there's a, when there's a curse on an individual, there's something from the invisible realm is, is like an umbrella over that person. Wherever they go, bad things happen to them. So is the favor. Is something tangible that's on you. That wherever you go, blessing follows you. And both favor and both curses come the same through the spoken word. Through the spoken word. Oh, I said through the spoken word. That's why don't curse your life. Don't curse your future. Speak words of life over your future. Speak words of life over your name. Even though it look difficult in the moment, speak something in the future. Speak words of life in the future. And Tuesday morning will greet you with a smile. Monday will greet you with coffee. All depends if you like Starbucks, like me. But you have to speak what you want. You have to, you have to speak what you seek. Are you with me here? So honest came to the meeting. This man had so many accidents. This story is in my book called The Cleansing Blood. He came, he was outside at the church, not knowing his destiny was about to change. He was driving home one day from work and he had a head-on collision. Break his back. And the doctor had, they had surgery on him for eight hours. The doctors built a big brace in the oven for him. Big brace around his back. But he was in so much pain still. He was outside the church waiting for his wife to come. And someone said, come into the service. He said, I don't do religion. Then he came into the service. I'm preaching. And God give me a word of knowledge. God is so merciful. He said, there's a man here with a, a back issue. I want to heal him. So I call. And this man came up like this. Do we have this picture of this thing? I will show it to you. He came big back brace. Then he explained to me. He had over 200 accidents in one year. All type of issues. That's a curse. It follows you. So is the blessing. So is favor. So is God's goodness. When he told me the story, I started to cry. I prayed for him. I removed that big back brace. And he was completely healed by the power of God right there. He bent over and tears flowed from his eyes. He said, he said, oh, can this be real? I said, yes. I said, yes, it's real. He was completely healed. What happened? The curse was removed and the blessing was released. I said, the curse was removed. He said, he told me, I'm not leaving here. I'm not leaving here. You remember, why are you with me? I'm not leaving here. He called his mom and his wife and his brother. He said, come to the service and God heal all of them. When the curse is working, bad things are happening. As a young man, Christopher and I went to see him. He couldn't hold on a job for two, two months. He couldn't hold on a job. Nothing was working for him. It's a curse. I went to his house. He told me he had an interview. Okay, he believed this, this is going to be a big breakthrough in his employment. And by with Air Canada, he get dressed that morning to get ready. Then September 11 take place. All the planes was canceled. He couldn't he was so discouraged. Went to his house. God spoke to me. It's a curse. 
I break that curse. Today, that was 2000, 2003. 2001? 2001 was September 11. Okay, I don't remember the, the, the times. But today, up to today, he's still working for Air Canada. You see, let me show this to you in the Bible. That favor is a tangible substance that God placed on you, that follows you. And wherever you go, good will follow you. Good things follow you. And that favor is on you now. So the favor is on me now. So that favor is on me now. We see in, in Numbers 28, verse 15 to 20. I'm not going to read all of that for sake of time. We see God instruct Moses to take the substance that was on him and place it on Joshua. Numbers 28, 15 to 20. That people will listen to him. That just like the Israelites will listen to Moses, they will listen to Joshua now. Josh, Moses, are you with me here, church? Moses transferred the favor that was on him and Joshua. And when Joshua speak, four million people listened to him like they were listening to Moses. Because favor, the, the, the tangible substance of favor was transferred from Moses to him. Today, that favor is coming to you when God speaks over you. When God releases words over you. That's why coming to the house of God is so important. You live in a world today of such negativity. And words, words are spiritual. You could be in the wrong environment. Have you been to a place before that is so negative that it gets in your brain, gets on your mind, you can feel the heaviness. But when you come to the house of God and the worship start to flow and the preaching start to flow, all of a sudden the heaviness is lifted. Your heart, peace come to your heart. Why? Favor is activated by the word of God. Say, I'm favored by my God. Let me give you, um, I'll give you five things today. I want you to write them down. That will triggers the favor of God. That's already on you. And when favor is triggers on your life, it will manifest in this realm of life. Say, I am favored by my daddy. Favor is released to you through words. Through what? Words. The spoken word. Do you remember? I'll give you an example of this. Do you remember when in the scripture in Genesis, Isaac has had two children, right? Esau and who? Jacob. And when time comes when they're about to receive the inheritance, Jacob told Esau, I want to bless you. I want to give you something. I don't want you to miss me here. Jake Isaac didn't give Esau money. He gave him words. Words. He spoke words. He transferred. Just like in our modern day right now, we could open our cell phone and transfer money from your account to someone's account. We call it e-transfer today. Yeah, and it worked. You can transfer things, spiritual things, with words. So you don't need a story. 
um, Rebecca told, Rebecca told, um, um, what's his name? Jacob, your father's about to bless Esau. But I want you to get the blessing. So we're going to trick, our, we're going to trick your father. And he, she, he, she engaged in some level of deception which was unnecessary. Hallelujah. I say hallelujah. So Jacob came to Esau. And he said, Father, I come for the blessing. And the father thought the prophesied over him. He said, kings will bow down to you. And the dew of heaven will be over your head. Words. Then Esau came in. He said, daddy, I'm here for the blessing. He said, I already bless your brother. He said, you must have blessings with you. You must have something with you still. He said, I have make him ruler. With words. But interesting enough, even though the blessing was on Jacob, Jacob went to Laban's house and he lived in the natural. Please don't miss me here. The blessing was on him. He wasn't aware of it. He went to Laban's house and for 14 years he lived like a slave with the blessing on him. And that's a picture of the church. Because the blessing of Christ is on us. We wear that blessing. Any man being Christ is a new creation. All things are passed away. But you hear some Christians speak. They say, no, I know I won't get that job. I know my marriage wouldn't work. See, you're, you're cursing your life. But when you know, you say, I'm wearing the blessing. So I'm wearing the blessing. It's in my mouth. It's in my mind. And for 14 years, this man who carried the blessing lived in absolute poverty. And then one day, something happened to him. He discovered the reason why Laban was prosperous was because of him. And the Bible says he changed his mind. And when he changed his mind, the blessings start to work. The blessing that was already on him start to work. I heard a story. I don't know how true it is. This African American woman, an elderly woman, went to England. She couldn't read. She went to England to see the queen. She was so blessed. Take a picture with the queen. The queen loved her. The queen gave her a plaque. And she brought the plaque home. Put the plaque on the wall. And every day she looked at the plaque. She couldn't read what was on the plaque. She was blessed. But she was ignorant to the blessing. And she was, she was, in, she was hungry. She was starving. Didn't have enough money for medication. But on that plaque, he said, take this plaque to anywhere and every bank in the world would respond to this plaque. Money was in the house. Blessing was in the house. But she was blind to the blessing. Then someone came to the house and said, what is this plaque? It's, I, was, I visited the queen of England years ago. She said, ah, this is the signature of the queen. You can take it to anywhere and get blessed. But she wasn't aware of it. And the blessing wouldn't work if you're not aware of it. Another thing about this, and this is where as long as I'm a pastor of this church, as long as I have breath to breathe, I'm going to smack this spirit called the spirit of religion. Because religion nullified the word of God. It stopped the word of God from working. The, the creative power of the word who caused galaxies and universe to function the word of God. Yet religion will stop it from working. Our wrong thinking 
can stop the word from producing. I told her before. One of the things I had to overcome, and thank God, God with his grace has helped me to overcome it. He said every time, every time I have a thought of possibility, thoughts of progress, thoughts of improvement, other thoughts will come to my mind immediately and tells me this is good for that person but not for you. Remember who you are. Remember who you are. You have done well so far but it's a limitation over your life. But I come to tell the devil that with Christ all things are possible with me. That favor has attached to my name. Say favor has attached to my name. And every time I try to make progress in my thinking. And this, that's why I wrote the book. How to reprogram yourself for success. Because there will fail your thoughts in my subconscious mind. And your subconscious mind is the real you. Your subconscious mind tell you, tell your feet, tell your hand how things are going to go. That's your conscious mind. So even though I had positive thoughts in my conscious mind, deep in my subconscious mind, there were thoughts of limitation, thoughts of fear, thoughts of bondage, thoughts of shackles. And even though I was saying the right thing, Deep in my core of my heart, I was making progress. Because progress comes from your subconscious mind. Until you go there, I'm talking to myself again. Until you, you discover it and say, no, my life was designed for the top. My, oh my God. My life my, my marriage was, should be a, a garden of Eden. My home should be a symbol of success. But the minute you start talking this way, thoughts come. Hey, who do you think you are? Be careful, buddy. You might become prideful. Those are religious devils. Let me tell you something. One day I told God, I said, God, if you think I'm supposed to be poor, you have to show me the example. And you have to be the example of poverty. And when I read the Bible, you are doing pretty good. I mean, you build a city from gold. 15,000 miles with 12 foundation. Why do you have to build this city? And where you live, where you walk is pure gold, not asphalt, pure, pure gold. So if you want me to be poor, your example is called lousy. Where's my church again? If you want me to be poor, your example is a son. Never say you could be poor. Come here. Talk to me, church. But then God says, your subconscious mind is the problem. Because even though you came from the village, the village is still in you. So get the village out of you. He told me that. So get the village out of you. So Christ can come into you. I've been working that ever since. So watch this. Are you with me here? Say I'm favored by my father. I'm the head. I am not the tail. I am favored. Now watch this. The first religious devil 
that I had to overcome. Maybe you, maybe you already overcome that. But I had to overcome it. It's the religious devil that said, you are not good enough. Are you here with me? Everybody else is good except you. Everyone can have the nice car, but you have the bicycle. Are you here? Then God started to help me. And what he told me changed my life. Changed my life. He said, son, I am not ashamed of you. I am not ashamed of your flaws. I'm not ashamed of your, of whatever your, whatever is your hang up is. I'm not ashamed of it. But what's going to happen, I'm going to add Christ to your imperfection. I'm going to add beauty to your ashes. And your ashy life will not corrupt the beauty. Are you hearing me here? The Bible says God took the sinless Christ and poured into you his perfection. Then take your imperfection and put it into Jesus. But it didn't change Jesus. Your imperfection doesn't change Jesus. Your flaws doesn't change Jesus. Then God attached Jesus to you and you become perfect. It, it revealed the power of Jesus. You sell you. And you know how bad you are. You still make mistakes. You're still struggling. You're still trying to overcome certain habits. But what God did, God attached Jesus to your imperfection. And from your imperfection come perfect. Come perfection. How can that happen? It show you how powerful Jesus is. Now, with that mindset, you face your woe. With that mindset, you face your tomorrow. With that mindset, you face your warfares. You approach hostile environment. Not with, not with your consciousness, but with Christ's consciousness. Are you hearing me here? See, the devil or religion or wrong thinking will like for you to remind you of your imperfection. But God said, no, son. That will hold you back. Face your tomorrow with me. Face your tomorrow with, with my consciousness. And I will change your imperfection. I will heal your imperfection. But what we have done, we spend all of our life trying to improve ourselves. I can't go into ministry. Why? I don't have this. I don't have that. I don't have this. I can't start this business. Why? I don't have this. I don't have that. Why? You are more conscious of your imperfection than Christ's perfection. That was my dilemma. Can't go into ministry. I can't speak. I can't talk. I have an accent. But discover, my accent is the most beautiful thing you ever heard. And by the way, when you go to heaven, you will sound just like me. Yeah, you better believe it. Jesus is wonderful. You have taken your 
imperfection and attach himself to it. So when you go out there facing your tomorrow, you don't condemn yourself. You don't beat yourself up. You face your tomorrow with Christ consciousness. You face your problem with Christ consciousness. Not with your consciousness. You catch me here. This was the liberation that came to my mind. Say, greater we see. That's in me. Than he that is in the world. The perfection of God. Come on. The perfection of Christ. Is working in me. God's favor. Is in my name. God's grace. Is in my name. God's favor. Is on my family. I'm blessed. Highly favored. Because of Jesus. One of the, the downfall today, I'm closing, of modern Christianity and the New Age movement is, is growing so much because they have taken the principles of success, the principles of, of the word of God and applied to people's life. So Oprah have a Oprah have all church today. Oprah. And thousands of people come to hear her speak. And she speaks positive things without Jesus. And when people come to church, they hear words that God's gonna kill you, God's gonna hurt you. But when you listen to Oprah, she said with a beautiful deceiving voice, you can do anything. And your spirit jumps. Because greatness is already placed inside of you by God. That's why every minister of the gospel should be positive. Can your spirit seek something that is positive? Your spirit, your spirit, am I boring you? I'm closing here. Your spirit always seek hope. And when your spirit sense discouragement, your spirit pull back. That's why there are many Christians today who end up in New Age movement. But there's a shift coming. I said, there's a shift coming. I said, there's a shift coming. And we're coming out of our closets. Because everybody else is coming out. Why can't we come out? And declare who we are. Standing on feet. Say this with me. Say, God is promoting me. God is lifting me up. God is moving me forward. Nothing will stop it. My ways are determined. Satan has come too late. All things are possible. In my business, all things are possible. In my career, all things are possible. In my body, in my body, all things are possible. With my children. All things are possible with my finances. All things are possible in my family. All things are possible. I am moving forward and nothing will stop it in the name of Jesus.